All right, language arts. We are going to work on our sentence and the grammar from Henry's Freedom Box. Who enjoyed that book? It's yeah. also sad. This is very yeah. sad. Yeah. yeah, it's very sad. And what makes it, I think, even more poignant is that it's true. So that actually happened, which makes it even more sad, I think. So Henry's Freedom Box. So, where is the proper noun in the sentence? The proper noun. Tessa. Oh, hello. a proper noun and a noun? Cole. No, that's a pronoun. What is a noun? M. Yes, so if a noun is a person, place, or thing, what is a proper noun? Ella. Talk louder. A specific name, a specific place, or a specific thing. So, in this case, we have Nancy is our proper noun because it's somebody's name. So, very good. So, what about a pronoun? We just talked vaguely, really quickly, that I mentioned pronoun. There is a pronoun in this sentence. James. Yes. Who is he in this sentence? When he wiped away his tears, Nancy too was gone. Who is he, Sam? Um, Nancy's wife? No, Nancy's. There's a name. What is the what is the name? Grayson. Henry. So when he wiped away his tears, Nancy too was gone. So sad. Um, what is the verb? Boy. No. Verb. What is a verb? Remember, a verb is an action. Christian. Yes. Remember the list of words when we were talking about complex sentences, compound sentences. We had the fanboys, and then we had the other list. I can't even begin to pronounce whatever it is. Whatever it is. Awawubit. So these are subordinating conjunctions. That's a big mouthful. But they're not the fanboys. So it, it, I'll list them off. After, although, as, when, while, until, because, before, if, since. After, although, as, when, while, until, because, before, if, since. Do you see? A subordinating conjunction in this sentence. Toby. Away. What did you say? Away. No. You have this list, but it's not if you can see it. Um, McKenna. When. when. I'm just going to put 
because it's too big of a word. Very good. Keep these. Keep this list because it is helpful. They're also known as comma causers because when you see one of these conjunctions, there's going to be a comma. When he wiped away his tears, Nancy Sue was gone. All right. I know. Who has an idea of something they want to title up here? I'll let you come up with the correct gram grammar for it. What do you see a noun or a verb? We got those. What about an adverb? I'll just do that. Adverb. There are two. Toby. Now remember, an adverb describes a what? What does an adverb describe? M. A verb. So we already found our verb. So look at the verb. One is not so tricky, the other is tricky. I will give, it, give you that. When he wiped, when he wiped away his tears, Nancy too was gone. Where is one of the adverbs? What is describing the verb? Machine. Away? Yes. Helen. Blonde? Owen. Two? Yes, very good. When he wiped away his tears, Nancy too was gone. Oh, so sad. All right, so what about an adjective? What is an adjective? Describe. Jeremiah. A noun. A noun. Very good. So our noun so we well we have not even discussed the noun. We need to do that. So before we do the adjective, we need to figure out what the what the noun is. What is the noun? Christian. Peter? Yes. We have a proper noun and we have a noun. So what would our adjective be? What is describing the tears? When he wiped away his tears, Nancy too was gone. The tears were what? Jonathan. Yes. So was is a linking verb, which you, we will, we will learn more about and you'll learn more about it next year too. But some of this is geared toward third and fourth. So sometimes there will be certain aspects of this that I will, eh. So we will talk about linking verbs though. So any word, what about his? His. So be careful with this. When he wiped away his tears, Nancy too was gone. His. Now he is a pronoun. Is his. Whose tears, first of all? Who are we talking about? Emmy. Yes. So, instead of saying when Henry wiped away Henry's tears, 
Nancy too is gone. Henry's tears. What does that tell you? Is there ownership in that word? Yeah. His or Henry's. If you add the proper noun to it, it kind of helps you. But it is not a noun, is it? It is a pronoun, but there's a specific type of pronoun that it is because it's ownership. <laughs> Cole. Yes, very good. Do you understand that? So if we wrote it out, when Henry wiped away Henry's, this is how it would look. What does that little mark right there tell you? What does it show you? Jeremiah. Yes. So sometimes it's helpful if you write it out with the proper noun or the noun. So in this case, his is Henry's. It is a possessive noun. So I'll write that on top of there instead of Henry's. But I wanted to show you how that would look. Pronouns. All right, very good, friends. Do we have everything? I think we do. Very good. Very good. So, any questions? Yes. Are you done? Yes. However, we are, I mean, we're not, no, we're not done with class. Huh? No. Oh, with the, you can put your folder away, yes, your binder. You're done, we're done with this, your binder. We can, yes. Who has, who has kept this? I never got one. You never got one? Let me... So if you have that paper, there were two papers, I don't believe, this is, um, what are these called? What kind of conjunctions are these called? Sub. That's right. So write that on the top of that. Because these will come in handy. These are one of those papers that you want to keep. And then, of course, the fanboys. The good old fanboys, yes. Yes. Subordinating conjunction is what you need to write on the top of those sheets so you know what they are. Just keep in mind those are also very important to know because like the fanboys, the conjunctions are an integral part of sentences. So uh, <laughs> That's right, whatever that means. All right, this is perfect. I will read some of Flora and Ulysses. No, then we have social studies. And again, if you can't focus in the class, you won't go outside. So if you are so worried about going so outside that you're not focusing on the class world work, then guess what's not going to happen? Yeah, because the classroom work is going to happen regardless. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so what?
interesting little fact that we learn about Ulysses. He can what? The bird, the plane, it's Ulysses. What can he do? Emma, fly. So awesome. I want to fly. <laughs> okay, chapter 34, the getaway. Who's getting away? What's the get what does that mean, the getaway? Helen, who's getting away? Um the um Flora and her dad. Yes, and Ulysses. Ulysses. Who are they getting away from? Olivia. The giant donut shop, yes. Yes, indeed. Rita is not happy because the squirrel landed in her hair. Her large, large hairdo. <laughs> Little Ulysses could have made a nest and she never would have known. All right, the getaway. They were making their getaway, but they were making their getaway slowly. Because even when Flora's father was thinking that things were hilarious, even when he was talking like a parakeet, he still apparently did not believe in speeding. Flora kept looking behind them to see if they were being followed by the cops, or Rita and Ernie. When she finally looked down at Ulysses, his eyes were still closed, and a ter terrible thought occurred to her. What if he has a concussion, she said to her father. Her father, of course, laughed. Flora tried to remember what terrible things can happen to you said about concussions. There was something about making the person with the head injury speak a favorite nursery rhyme so that speech patterns, slurring, etc., could be evaluated. What is slurring? Somebody is slurring their words. How do they talk? Anybody ever heard somebody? Owen. Yeah, they kind of, they talk like this. Slurring. They can't, they can't say their words very well because, what's that? That's what my brother is. Right, so they, they, when that, he will probably, that will probably remedy itself. But if someone get, gets a con bad concussion, head injury, they, they could start slurring their words. And also another, uh, if, you, if someone's having a stroke, they could start slurring their words. So if you ever hear, see somebody or hear somebody slurring their words, that's a good indication that something may not be right. All right? So take that seriously. Flora stared at the squirrel. He couldn't speak. Also, she doubted he knew any nursery rhymes. There was a very small cut on his head, but the bleeding had stopped and he was breathing softly, regularly. Bless you. Ulysses, she said. And then she remembered in its entirety, an ominous sentence from Terrible Things. It is absolutely imperative that you keep the potentially concussed patient awake at all times. She shook the squirrel gently. His eyes stayed closed. She shook him harder, and he opened his eyes and then closed them again. Flora's heart thudded once and then dropped all the way down to her toes. She was suddenly terrified. Do superheroes die, she said out loud. Her father stopped laughing. Listen, he said, we won't let him die. Flora's heart thudded again, a different kind of thud. It wasn't fear this time, it was hope. Does that mean that you won't try to hit him over the head with a shovel? She said, I won't, said her father. Ever? Ever. You promise, I promise. Her father looked at her in the rear view mirror. Flora looked back. Let's go to your place then, she said. I'll be, he'll be safe there. At these words, George Buckman started laughing hysterically again. Wait. Chapter 35, Fear Smells. <laughs> Flora's father never walked through the hallways of Blitz and Arms. He ran. And Flora Buckman, holding her possibly concussed squirrel, ran with him. 
Flora and George Buckman ran because the Blixen Arms was owned and managed by a name, man named Mr. Claus, who was in possession of an enormous, angry, orange cat, also named Mr. Claus. The cat, Mr. Claus, prowled the hallways of Blixen Arms, peeing on the resident's door and vomiting in the stairwells. <laughs> That's lovely. Mr. Claus was also, Claus, I think, Claus was also notorious for hiding in the green gloom of the hallways and waiting until some unlucky person stepped out of the door of his or her apartment or into the main entrance of the Blixen Arms or down into the basement laundry room and then pouncing on the person's ankles, biting and scratching and growling and sometimes, weirdly enough, purring. Oh, that sounds like Mia. <laughs> Flora's father's ankles were deeply scarred. The cat can smell your fear, Flora shouted as she ran. It's a scientific fact. She had read about it, and terrible things can happen to you. Fear smells, said terrible things. And the smell of fear further incites the predator. What does it mean to incite? Further incites the predator. What does that mean? Incite means it makes the predator even more aware of your presence. Makes them more, it could be make them more angry, make them more curious, but incite means action. Ahead of her, her father laughed his hearty and seemingly endless laugh. If Flora had more time, she would have said, for the love of Pete, what's so funny? But she didn't have funny, and she didn't have time. There was a squirrel to save. Can we read a little bit more? Chapter 36, Surprise, Anger, and Joy. Flora stood and stared at the sign on apartment 267. It was made of fake wood and engraved with white letters that spelled out the words, Residence Within, Dr. S. Mesham. Mesham. And, and was the, what was the apostrophe doing there? Did the doctor own the Mesham? And what was it with the exclamation marks? Did people not know what they were for? Surprise, anger, joy. That's what exclamation marks were for. They had nothing to do with who resided where. But at this particular moment, the exclamation mark seemed entirely appropriate. It was terribly exciting that a doctor who didn't know how to use apostrophes lived in apartment 267. What are you staring at? said her father. He was putting, in, putting his key into the door of apartment 271. And he was laughing softly. A doctor lives here, said Flora. Dr. Misham, said her father. I'm going to see if he can help with Ulysses said Flora. Excellent idea, said her father. He opened the door of his apartment. He looked to the left and then to the right. Keep your eyes open for Mr. Kloss, he said. I'll join you in a bit. He slammed the door just as Flora raised her hand to on Dr. Misham's door. But she didn't get a chance to knock. The door swung open of its own accord. An old lady stood there smiling her dentures glowing white in the perpetual green twilight of the hallway. Someone inside the apartment was screaming. No, someone was singing. It was opera, opera music. Who knows what opera is? Yes, it's very, it's a... Yes, it is. Very beautiful, but it's very, I mean, singing is different than normal singing, right? I don't even know how to explain opera. It's very high. The women sing very high. All right, at last, said the old, old lady, I'm so glad to see your face. Flora turned and looked behind her. I am speaking to you, little flower. Me, said Flora. Yes, you, little flower. Flora Bell, beloved of your father, Mr. George Buckman. Come in, little flower, come in. Actually, said Flora, I'm looking for a doctor. I have a medical emergency. Of course, of course, said the old woman. We are, all of us, medical emergencies. You must come in now. I have been waiting for so long. She reached out and yanked Flora over the threshold of 267 and into the apartment. 
the criminal element had a lot to say about entering the home of a stranger. They suggested that, suggested that you do so at your own risk. And that if you did make the questionable decision to enter the home of someone you didn't know, a door to the outside world should be left open at all times to facilitate a quick escape. Should you ever go into a stranger's home? No. 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 The old lady slammed the door closed. The opera music was very loud. Flora looked down at the hand that was on her arm. I was spotted, it was spotted and wrinkled. Beloved, thought Flora, me? It's just, the, it's just the kids. All right, we're gonna be one more. It'd be nice to get some of this done so we can watch the movie. Chapter 37, Singing with the Angels. He woke with a single giant watery eye staring at him. He blinked, his head hurt. The gigantic eye was mesmerizing and beautiful. It was like staring at a small planet, a whole sad and lonely planet. Ulysses found it hard to look away. He stared at the eye and the eye stared back. Was he dead? Had he been hit over the head with a shovel? He could hear someone singing. He knew he should be afraid, but he didn't feel afraid. So much had happened to him in the last 24 hours that somewhere along the way, he had stopped worrying. Everything had become interesting as opposed to worrisome. He was dead. Well, that was interesting too. My, eye my eyesight is not what it was, said the voice. When I was a girl, I could read the sign before anyone else could so see the sign. Not that it helped me seeing things clearly. Sometimes it's safer not to see. And I ask you, what good does it do to read the words of a lie? But that's a different story. I will tell that story later. I find this magnifying glass to be of great assistance. Yes, yes, I see him. He is very much alive. I know he's alive, said another voice. I can tell that. Flora, Flora was here with him. How can how comforting. Hmm, yes, I see, he is a squirrel. For the love of Pete, said Flora, I know he's a squirrel. He is missing much fur, said the voice. What kind of doctor are you, said Flora. The voices in the room kept singing. They were full of sadness and love and desperation. The voice belonging to the giant eye hummed along with them. Ulysses tried to get to his feet. A gentle hand pushed him back. I am Dr. Misham, who is, the doctor, and I, who is the doctor of philosophy, said the voice. My husband, the other Dr. Misham, was the medical doctor, but he has passed away. This is euphemism, of course. I mean to say he is dead. He has departed from this world. He is elsewhere and singing with the angels. Ha! There is another euphemism, singing with the angels. I ask you, why is it so hard to stay away from the euphemisms? They creep in always and attempt to make the difficult things more pleasing. So, let me try again. He is dead, the other Dr. Misham, the medical one. And I hope that he is somewhere singing, perhaps singing something like Mozart. But who knows where he is and what he's doing. For the love of Pete, said Flora again, I, use a med I need a medical doctor. Ulysses ha might have a concussion. Shh, shh, calm, calm. Why are you so agitated? There is no need to worry. You are worried about what? You will tell me what happened that makes, that makes you think concussion. He hit a door with his head. Hmm, yes, that would give a concussion. All right, we're gonna leave it there. All right, it is hot in here. I feel like it keeps getting hotter and hotter and hotter. All right. <laughs>